Hey everyone, it's Laura here from Grain & Co. and I'm here today to do June's Creative Maker Box. Uh, this is our Canada Day uh, bunting uh, hanger kind of thing. You can either put it inside or put it on your uh, front door. Um, so we're going to start with staining first. So um, I'm just going to take all of these pieces because um, there's it, there isn't a whole lot of staining, but we are going to stain the back. So, um, so we're going to need this piece. We're going to stain the back. We are going to do a little staining in the front. So if you line up these notches here, just so you see where we're staining, we are going to stain. There we go. We're going to stain here because that's the part that's going above. And then we are also, whoops, I turned that upside down. I'm like, why does that look funny? Um, turn that the right way. There we go. So we're staining here. So I'm going to come down just a little bit. So I'll make sure that it just blends into there. So that's that way. And then I'm also going to stain um, in here. So when I'm putting the sign, even though it mostly fills it, it just doesn't look like it has bare wood. So. Um, I'm going to do a little bit there and then we're going to do both sides. So I'm just going to set one piece off to the side at a time. I'm going to grab my stain and we're going to get started. Okay. So I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to zoom by this really quickly and uh, I'll be back when we're done. Uh, I'll stop before I actually stop talking. Uh, just very lightly uh, put it on here. You don't want to get it so it's going on to the other side um, because you're going to be painting that white. So I'm barely pressing on my brush just because I don't want it to be going through those little holes that we all have here. And I'm not using a whole lot. Just enough to be able to wipe it on and it doesn't have to be perfect there's a lot of charring from the laser but there we go so just lightly so you don't get any extra on there so then just set it off to the side um, and then I'm going to do this one And I'm going to flip this over just and making sure that my area is, you know, got full of stain. Um, and then I'm just going to come in here and do this here. I'm just going to let it go down a little further. So when I overlap, it doesn't look like I might have forgot just a little bit. So there. So that's that part. And I'm just going to. I'm just going to lead it up somewhere. Eh, I'll flip it upside down. Okay. And then I come back and grab this one. Because remember, just so we can visualize, we're going to do this top piece. So I'm just pretty much going to come in here and do this strip here because this area here is going to be covered. So don't do the whole thing because we're going to be painting it red and white, but just come in here and do this. Try not to get my dirty gloves on the rest of it, but okay, there we go. And then just give that a wipe. Okay. So that's done, and I haven't even touched half my stain. So I'm um, just gonna set that off to the side. Um, and I'm just gonna wait till this is dry because once I start a color, we've got red and white in both different um, areas. Like this one will have red and white, this will have red and white, this will have white, and then these are all red. So there's no point in me starting on one color because uh, one set we'll be doing, some parts we'll be using a sponge, um, and then some parts we'll be doing, um, we'll be doing uh, a brush. So 
um, unless you want to come in here and you know tape all these off and to then do a sponge that's that's fine these ones are a bit more straight in the line so that might be easier to tape but these ones have a slight curve which just tend to be a little bit harder to tape but it is uh, what you prefer so um, I'm just gonna hand paint in here and probably sponge the ones over there so I'll be back in a little bit when these are dry shouldn't take long 10-15 minutes and then we'll move on to the next part all right see you soon hi guys I started painting and then I'm not sure what happened to the video so um, I'm just gonna come back here really quickly explain what I did so um, what I've done is I just started to paint the white and uh, which is this piece and I started with my sponge and then I'm gonna come in here and do this one I'm just gonna tape it off first um, and then I just moved into painting this part so um, not sure where why the video stopped but anyways um, so I'm just gonna finish up here and then um, I mean you didn't miss much otherwise other than me just starting so just keep checking on the camera make sure it doesn't go weird okay so I'm just gonna set that one off to the side um, and then I'm going to tape this one so we're going to go on that score line and then just run your finger over that tape so it really seals it and then you can fold it over if you want make sure you get those edges too I mean, if you don't have any tape, that's fine. You can either just carefully, um, even just take a paintbrush. Okay. I just feel like I need to check my camera every two seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna just come in here and do this really fast. Okay, so those ones are done. Now those are the only ones that we're doing with the sponge because um, we can, you can do this one with a sponge. You would have to tape these ones. These ones, the lines are a bit more straighter. These ones, they have a bit of a curve to them. So you might find this to be a little bit harder to do. So um, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to um, paint them with a brush. Uh, I'm gonna find one here. So I'm not painting with a bigger brush. I'm just gonna, well, I can't remember what I did the first time. Where is my brush? Um, I thought I had it here. So maybe I put, oh yeah. So I could do this one, but you just really wanna make sure you have control over getting to that edge. I think I used my little one when I did it, so I'll start with this. Okay, so just come in here. And I'm just gonna paint these all. And I'll go really fast on the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me. Usually for, I used to like, um, usually when I do whites, I do um, usually three coats, but this one I don't because I go back over it with some stain after, so I really don't um, care how, um, how perfect my white is. I want them to be a little bit uh, worn looking, not quite so um, perfect, so. You're gonna find that your coats with your uh, brush are gonna be a little heavier looking. So the ones that you do with the sponge, you might have to do three just because your ones with your brush tend to be a little darker already after two.
So that's done. Just uh, stick your brush in a bag. And go grab one and be right back. Or if you don't have any bags, you can just rinse it out and it'll be ready for the next coat. Okay, so I'm gonna set that off to the side too. Now these ones are already dry, so I'm gonna come in here and give them a sand. Okay, that's fine. This one will be dry as well. gonna finish these ones up and then um, yeah I'm just gonna do everything twice so I'll be back in a second okay good that's two coats now remember I'm just looking more I mean, we've done two, whoops. Um, but remember, we're gonna do a red letter over top of that score mark. So if you're looking to make sure anything is even, look at your edges. Anything that will be outside of that score mark because that's what you're gonna see. Um, and uh, so just pay attention to there the most. You don't have to, something's missing in the center. Not quite a big deal. Okay, so for me on this particular project, two is enough. So I'll set that one off there. I don't think I, did I do two on this? See, now I don't even remember. I think I did, cause it looks, oh yes I did. It looks pretty even. And if I didn't, then I don't remember. Did I do two in here? Yes, I did. And if I didn't, I'll go check after. Okay, and then now I'm gonna come back and this was my last one. So I'm gonna come back and do, these. I'm going to give them a quick sand and then I'm going to paint them again. So I will speed that up so you don't have to watch me for 10 minutes doing this and then we'll be back to do the red color. So I'll see you shortly. So those ones are done, and two is more than enough. Um, but I just, okay, I'm gonna put my brush away. Just, so they won't dry, um, you won't be able to compare um, exactly what they look like until they dry, because paint always deepens as it dries. Um, but I'm just going to, see this one's pretty even, so that's pretty good for the two. And I'm okay with that. And uh, yeah, cause I'm gonna distress the edges anyways and dirty that up. So I'm okay with two on everything. It looks fairly even. So I'm gonna let this dry uh, because I don't want anything to be wet as I do the red, just in case I grab it and it turns a little pink. Um, so I'll probably leave this now till uh, a little bit, um, before I come back and do the red coat. So, um, yeah, I will see you guys uh, in a little bit. Okay, bye. Hi guys, I'm back to do the next color. So we're gonna do red. Um, so what you wanna do is get all your stuff prepped. I've done all my sanding on my white and I've retaped. And uh, now I'm gonna get started on the red part. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do the sponging part first and then I'll go in and do the painting part with my brush on the other part. So let me grab my paint. Now remember, make sure that seal is really well because you don't want any red to bleed into, into the white area there. So 
Now normally with red I will do three coats because red is considered a clear base color which means um, it takes several coats to get a nice even base. It's, it's very, um, I mean like even after my first coat I can still see the grain of wood. Um, so you definitely want to be careful um, on how you're applying it so that it looks fairly even. Um, and then, um, so that way as you transition from one coat to two coat, it doesn't look too blotchy. Um, but um, I'm going to do a technique over top of the red because I'm not one for a bright red color. I like to tone it down a bit. So um, I'm going to go over that. So that's why I don't need to do any more than two coats um, to do what I want to do. So but if you don't want to do the technique I'm doing, then you can always just um, do another coat of red if you've got enough paint left over, you should. Um, but I'm just going to go through this really quickly. I know you know how to do this. Um, and then I'll come back. So that part is done. And then I'm going to grab one of my pieces. Now remember, when we're doing this, and this is how it stacks up, because we'll line them up like that, is that this piece, We'll sit over top like this and just grab my other one and this piece will come in like this so we don't have to paint red all the way into here so if you just come to here then you don't need to paint this on that area as well as on this one so we're just going to paint the arm part um, of that because then you just save your paint for for whatever because you don't you're not gonna see it now remember if you want to tape these bottom ones you can I mean they're a bit straighter in the line but the top ones are a bit more curved so or you could do like you did with the red and just or with the white and just go for it with the brush so I'm just gonna go for it and you can just watch me paint the teeniest tiniest little speckle of the line here so and if I get an exacto knife and scrape it really quickly I can get it I can get it off okay there we go so I'm gonna let those dry I'm not gonna do um, a, a Part of the video watching me do the second coat um, just repeat what I did and then once we're done the second coat then I'll come back and show you how to do um, the other technique over the red um, so that way you if you want to do it you can or you can do another coat of red that's totally up to you so I'll come back here in a little bit my stuff's pretty much dry so I'll probably end up doing it here pretty shortly um, but then I'll come back as soon as I've done all right, I'll see you guys soon. Okay guys, I'm back. So now uh, we need to do a quick sand on these. Now when I do the red, I like to 
give those edges a distress because I want to, when I use the stain that we're gonna do next, I want it to discolor that as well. So I'm just gonna sand those really quickly. I've already done my white ones. And I'm just do this and then come in here and try and pull some on the edges here. All right, that's that one and So I didn't mean to paint this, I just had a bunch of extra paint on my brush when I was done, so I just kind of rubbed it off on there. All right, I'm just gonna wipe that off, get rid of all my dust. And where's my other pieces? Oh yeah. So keep these in here for this part. I've just given them a sand, kind of a quick one all over. Make sure you can get them out. Give them a push, make sure that you didn't lock them in there. And same with your flay or your maple leaves. All right, so there's really no perfect way to this. All I do is take my stain and if you want a glove on your finger is going to get a little dirty but all I do is fold up my paper towel on my finger I just pour a little bit on a paper towel and I just dab into it and then I blot it all off because a little bit goes a long way and all I am is going to dirty this up. So I'm just wipe it on the edges and then I come in here and kind of just color over the red. And I just keep going back into that stained area there and just blot if I need some, but it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but I'm not sure what the camera's going to pull up. So these three haven't been done. These three have. So they're a little bit darker. There's the stain isn't perfect, I'm wiping it on. You'll see a little bit of unevenness, but that I don't care about. And then I'm making sure I hit the edges so it colors, it stains the raw wood that I just sanded in and revealed. So it just helps for um, deepen that red for me because like I said, I don't like it to be bright red, I like to, darken it a little bit. Now, when I take this, I also carefully go along the edge on my white. I don't want to dirty the whole white. I'm just taking it on the edges. As you can see, it's just staining, staining the edge there. So if I get a little bit on the rest of it, that doesn't bother me just kind of making it look a little bit old and older and worn and I need just a little bit more stain so it doesn't take much you just need somewhere for that stain to soak up into so you can just blot and pull out a little bit you just want too much and you're just coloring it on with your finger And if your red painting wasn't perfect, this kind of helps hide that. Okay, so that's that one. And if you don't want to do this, that's totally up to you. But, oops, look at that. Got it right to the table. All right. Just use your finger to get right up to there. You're just kind of painting with your finger. If it gets a little on the white, it's not a big deal. come 
the on the white and just hit that edge. Okay, so those three or those two are done. Now I'm gonna do these guys. I'm just gonna get that wet and then I'm just gonna I don't know if that's enough on my finger. Got a little bit of a hole on there, so I'm just gonna start a new spot. Pour a little bit. I mean you can dump right into the container, but you don't want it to soak too much into your paper towel so that way I can control how much I'm grabbing and I'm just gonna come in here and dirty these up a little bit same with this one The stain shouldn't look wet at all on here. All you're doing is, is like it's pretty much, it is dry, but all you're doing is darkening those reds and uh, that's it. So I'm just gonna give that um, just a little bit longer to dry. Um, I'm gonna pull these out of here now. So I wanna make sure all of my pieces are good to go. This one we have to glue because if you are gonna use it outside on your front door, um, then the adhesive will just not withstand our hot summer heats. Um, so yeah, that's why we're gluing it. I know it's a pain, but sometimes we gotta do it. All right, so yeah, those ones came out pretty good. So that's great. And then just do the same with your maple leaves here. Just pop them out. We won't need these templates anymore because we have the score mark. So just set them off there and uh, make sure you don't throw any in the garbage. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, two, four, six, yeah, 11. All right, so that's it. And then I'll come back and then we will glue it all together. All right, see you in a bit. Okay guys, um, I forgot to mention to do um, the Canada Day and this part to do a little bit of stain. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now before we start uh, the assembly. Let me just get a little bit on here. By now you would have usually done all the reds first, so just make sure you don't put too much on here. Okay, and just quickly running it around the edges here. It won't look so dark once you get the red on there but I kind of like it to be a bit messier but okay and I'm not worried about this part because um, this will be glued in the inside so all right so I'm just gonna put that one off to the side for a second and then we'll get started on here so by now everything should have been sanded it's all dry and so forth so um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to glue. So line up those two bottom pieces just so you can get a visual. We're going to put glue on these areas in the back, okay? And then, because these pieces overlap these, we don't wanna put glue in the whole thing. Otherwise, when you flip it over, you'll have glue sticking out here. So. Really, all you need is glue on the edges of each of these pieces 
because that's what's going to make contact here. So that's the reasoning there. So make sure your area is clean and dry. And I'm just going to flip this one over like this. And we're going to grab my glue. So remember, we're just doing into this area. We'll do all the way across and then we'll start to do the edges. And we'll even put some in here. So, all right. Now I'm using my clear glue. If you're using a wood glue, um, that's gonna dry a bit yellow. You're just gonna have to be careful how much you add because when you put them together, if it squishes out in the front, you're just gonna need to wipe that away. If it squishes out in the back, it really doesn't matter because you won't see it. So, all right, there we go. Okay, so now when you do this part, this part over here overhangs the, okay, I'm gonna do this backwards so you can see. So these ones are shorter than these ones. So if you put glue down here at the bottom, it won't attach either. So you wanna make sure and back off about, I don't know, a half an inch, about there. Coming out the wrong way, there we go. Okay, and then I'm just gonna zigzag some in the middle there. Okay, so put this piece down, flip this one over. I'm gonna hold on to these edges here because that's where they need to line up. So make sure they're lined up here. Nice and straight, and then gently put some pressure so it makes contact. I got a little bit of glue seeping out right here, but I'm not worried because remember, this is gonna come and cover that, so don't, don't stress if it's peeking out in some of those areas where you're going to overlap. So I'm just gonna gently give it a press and then come back and check, make sure nothing moved when you press that. If, you, if your board has a little bit of a warp, which they all seem to be fine when we're cutting them, um, you might need some clamps, you might need to tape just to keep them together, so just make, keep an eye on that. Um, so right now, that's what the, where the glue I did. We've got just a little bit peeking through there, but that's okay. Mine will dry clear. So I'm gonna let that sit off to the side for now um, and dry. And then the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one because that'll be the next piece that goes into there. So now we are going to have to glue all of those letters. So if you want to, you can find all of them first so you know where they're going all right so just once again just take some glue we have these bottles at the store if you haven't heard me say that um, and we've got them empty so you can add whatever glue you've got and we do have a little bit of glue that we carry that we can fill some of those bottles if you don't have any. And then just give it a press. And now remember, when you're using this, doing the score lines, you should not see any of that score line because we've inset it just a little bit, so it should be perfectly hidden underneath each of your letter. And then you're just gonna sit here and carefully glue these into place. So I'm, now that you know what we're doing, I'm just gonna quickly go through and do each letter so I can fast 
make it real fast and then I'll come back on the next step. Okay, so those ones are done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this into place because this one will be dry. Now, because there's a bit of a lip under here, it's best if you can find something that is that thickness. I'm trying to think of what I've got. Nothing in your kit that's going to do that. So just find something because once we glue this, you don't want, you need it to put, um, you need it to lay straight. Now, I mean, if you have a, some glue and a pin nailer, you can nail it. I don't even have my nailer here. So um, I need something I can wedge under there to um, hold that up. So let me just see. Oh, my paintbrush. So if you grab your paintbrush, that seems to, and shove it under the middle, that seems to be fine. So I'm going to use a little thicker glue so I don't have to use so much of my other stuff and use it in this area. If it seeps out, it's not gonna matter because I'm not gonna see it. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got some on there. Okay, so put that in there. And then center it between both sides and put it some pressure on there. If you have to, put some weight on there, like, you know, a couple cans or something, if you're finding it's having a hard time wanting to stay flat. But it should definitely feel like nothing is higher than each other. Like, they're both should be exactly the same height because that's all the same thickness of material. So, just going to let that sit there for... Um, a minute or two and then we will come back and we will do we will do this piece because we'll glue them all together but just give this a moment to dry and make sure all of those edges are flat otherwise this won't stay down so definitely make sure everything is good to go and I'll be back in just a minute guys okay it should be almost dry I'm just gonna uh, continue on with this piece so while we're waiting we can go ahead and glue this piece on here okay I'm just gonna set this here I don't want to move that yet I like to check it from all sides because even though it looks like it's covered, sometimes it's just enough. See, I can see that part should coming through. So I just need to wiggle it ever so slightly to cover it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that sit and dry. This should be good to go. I'm not gonna pull my brush out yet because I wanna make sure that um, everything is still um, flat. So now I'm going to do this one as well. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white glue on this part, but in the middle here, I'm going to tend to use more of my, uh, wood glue just because, um, I've got this big area and I really don't want to use all of this good stuff. So, so this part here, just gonna do a quick little one there. And then I'm gonna grab, you might see, oh yeah, you guys can see this. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of this in the middle. And because this part's gonna be closer to the word and not that it, I want it to spill out, I'm just gonna put a little bead of that there. Now we're looking for the notch for the notches to go um, in here or this part to go the inset to be down because that's where that little piece is gonna come in and sit 
and there's really no other way this is going to line up. So just line up those two side ends again. Give this a gentle push because it will move some of that glue around and make sure as you're pushing come back and check these two ends to make sure they're still properly lined up. Okay, so that's good. Everything's making contact on my end. And I'm just going to let this once again sit here and dry because I don't want it to warp there. And then um, we're going to come in and we'll glue that one on. But I just want to make sure this is nice and um, dry here for a minute before I come in here and do this one. But that will be the next part. So I will give that a moment and I'll be right back again. Okay, so mine is dry. So same thing with this. I'm going to do some of my um, clear glue um, on the parts that could squeeze it out. And then I'm going to use my thicker glue, uh, my wood glue for the rest. So remember, this is making contact right there. But then once we get down here, there is a gap. So um, you could squeeze uh, your glue into here, especially the, uh, my, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my wood glue on here because this is where it's gonna make contact there. So that way when it squeezes out, if it squeezes out, I'm not gonna see it. This one, I know that it's gonna make contact up here at the top. So I don't want to make any yellow glue squeeze out there. And then I'm going to put a little bit in this area because it will touch here and there. And everything else will have to make contact on that area. And then everything else is, um, you could just do a little bit on here. Just so you don't go too far down. Okay, so just grab it. And gently set it to those marks where the white, and just be careful in case you didn't give this enough time to dry. Make sure you have no glue on your hands. And then give this a press. Now these two should be flush because this piece and this piece are the same thickness. So just, oops, see my ones to slide because of all that glue. So once you've got it lined up and you've given these each a press, then I would suggest leaving it for a moment. Now mine wants to lift up on the edges. Well, yeah, a little bit. So I'm just gonna sit here a second and hold these. I'm actually going to try and hold all five spots if I can, just so it has a chance to set. And yeah, so I'm just going to sit here and hold this and uh, I will edit the video so it doesn't have me sitting here for a couple minutes and then I'll be back and we'll do the rest. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so mine is dry. Oh, see this one corner. <laughs> okay, I thought it was good. So I just have to sit here and hold this one corner. It wants to be a little temperamental. Um, so just be patient. I have a couple cans here off to the side that I had, but then I thought it was dry. So maybe I'll just pause again and then I'll come back in a second when this corner will decide to stay down. I might just put some tape on it here and then be right back. Okay, so I've held it long enough, but there's this one corner that is being silly. So I put a little bit of tape on it to help put a hold on to it, but you're gonna see me just do what I do when I'm at home. So I'm just gonna put a can of paint that I have up here, and I'm just gonna put some weight on that corner, and I'm just gonna leave it. And then we can continue on in our video. So these things next are just being glued into those score marks. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna 
do a little bit of glue. Actually, yeah, I'll do it here. So just watch that little tail piece if you are doing, or the little stem piece. If you're using your, if you're using wood glue, you might just put a little on and then just take a paper towel and just kind of blot some of that off so it doesn't um, squeeze out so much. If mine squeezes out, it's not, like I said, it's not as noticeable. So I'm just going to do these really fast and I'll be right back. So that's the last one. Just gonna give that a moment and I'm gonna check on my corner here. See how it's doing. Sometimes you just gotta be careful with the tape, you don't pull it back up. Yeah, it's it is what it is. It's wanting to have a little bit of a lip under there. And maybe I'll just let it sit for a while. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll let this sit for a while because it, it's not like it totally bugs me, but I definitely want to make sure that glue's good and dry. So I'm going to leave it. Um, and then all we have left to do is tie the string. And we put a 28 inch string on here and we'll just tie it up but i can come back for that and uh so you can hang it on your door you can hang it inside if you're going to put it on your door and you don't have a screen um then you know you could always put a, a command strip on the back so that it prevents it from um banging up against the door every time the door is open and closed that's a little bit of a trick there you can do on that um, other than that we're done so yeah i'll just come and show you how i tie my knots i mean nothing nothing special but um yeah i'll come back in a few minutes or whenever this decides to just stay down and um yeah then i'll finish it up with you guys all right i hope you enjoyed that and i will be back shortly Okay guys, it's all done here and I'm just going to quickly tie the string. So I'm just, cause I always like to have my strings going the same direction. So this one I came in from the front and tied the knot the regular way and then And I come in here, oops, now I'm gonna have a moment and <laughs> and I have to okay, I gotta balance this thing here. And then I gotta come in from behind and pull my string. So that way both tails are gonna go into the back. So whatever you do. Whatever you did at the other one, other side, you have to do opposite. So normally you'll go over the string to tie your first loop. This one you have to go behind so that way your tails, and if it doesn't matter to you, then you just tie it how you wish. Um, and then you can kind of shorten them, but that's, that's what it is. And then you can trim those up, but yeah. So that one's cute. I thought it'd be something a little different for Canada Day than a regular sign. And I just love the bunting. I always was jealous of the Americans and they always have their bunting. So this was, um, this was fun to be able to do this one. All right, and so we'll see you guys back here um, next month. All right, thanks guys.